Hello, I'm John Cunningham, and welcome to another episode of the Red Chip Money Report. For those of you new to the show, Red Chip is an investor relations, media, and research firm focused on emerging growth companies. Our unique platform combines global multimedia with traditional investor relations, reaching investors around the world. Now, today's show features interviews with executives of two public companies. First up is Zometica, stock symbol ZOM on the New York Stock Exchange American. Zometica is addressing unmet needs in veterinary health through its expanding product portfolio of innovative diagnostics and medical devices designed to improve patient health as well as the productivity and improve revenue for veterinarians. Learn more in an interview when we speak with the CEO, Larry Heaton. Up next is Aridus Pharmaceuticals, stock symbol ARDS on the NASDAQ. Aridus is developing novel anti-infective therapies to treat life-threatening diseases that overcome the threat of antimicrobial resistance and viral pandemics. You'll learn more about their groundbreaking development programs later in the show. Now, before we get to the first interview, our quote of the week. It comes from the book, Small Stocks, Big Money. Get to know management. Look for intelligence, a high level of integrity, strong communication skills, and make sure they understand their products and business well. This quote comes from Charles Diker, an investment manager featured in Chapter 8 of Small Stocks, Big Money. This is a book of exclusive interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Get a digital copy on Amazon for just $18. Now let's get started with our first interview today with Zometica. Larry, thanks for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Dave. I appreciate the opportunity. It's my pleasure. You joined Zometica about 15 months ago and you've transformed the company in a very short period of time. You have an incredible background, 35 years in biotech, leading biotech and medical device companies, 18 years with U.S. Surgical Corporation. You were on a business council uh, that advised NASA. Why did you join Zometica? Well, I've always been an animal lover. And when I was presented with the opportunity to take on the leadership at Zometica, uh, I saw it as an opportunity to, to really do for animals what I'd spent my career doing in the human health side. Zometica at the time had, was blessed with uh, an abundance of capital, $271 million on the balance sheet. And they had tremendous potential to put that capital to work in providing products and services to veterinarians that would improve not only the quality of care for the, for the pet, but also for the business situation for the veterinarian. And I, frankly, I thought it would be fun. Well, let's talk about the products and services. So probably the best way to talk about our product line is to take a visit with a pet parent and a pet as they come into a clinic. You know, you bring a pet that's suffering, has some kind of a disease or maybe an injury to it, the first thing that the vet's going to do is try and figure out what's wrong. And if they suspect an adrenal or thyroid issue, the first product they would encounter of ours is our True Forma diagnostic platform. This product allows for the veterinarian to get results from laboratory tests while the pet's still in the clinic so that they can begin therapy sooner and start getting that pet, pet on the road to recovery a little bit sooner. These products that we make, uh, that we test with our particular platform, are the only ones available at the point of care. But now the, the pet uh, has been diagnosed perhaps with a condition and maybe they need to take some blood and look at it under a microscope. Our TrueView product, which will launch in the first half of this year, is a digital microscope that allows a veterinarian to have their tech take the slide and put it right in the machine without the need for processing. The MicroView, now to be called the TrueView, will do all that processing automatically for them. And then it takes a digital image and provides that to the veterinarian to make the diagnosis. Now once all that's done, maybe the pet needs to stay overnight. Maybe they're in the ICU or maybe they have to have surgery. In any of those cases, they're going to need monitoring. Somebody needs to watch over them. Instead of having a tech sleep on a cot or constantly be watching the animal, we just launched this past week the Vet Guardian wireless pet monitoring system. It constantly monitors the TPR, the temperature, pulse, and respiration, the vital signs of that pet. And it then communicates that via our MyZoMedica web portal 
uh, to the techs or vets or really anyone that has a browser and has the code to be able to sign in. More importantly, if any of those metrics, vital signs, fall above or below what's normal, then a text or email is sent immediately uh, to the staff or as many of the staff as would like to get it. So we take good care of pre-surgical monitoring, post-surgical monitoring, ICU, overnight monitoring. But now the surgery's done. Uh, or perhaps they didn't have to have surgery because of our PulseVet shockwave therapy device. What that device does is it projects a sound wave into the tissue and it activates the body's own regenerative properties. It upregulates cytokine production. What that really means is it reduces inflammation and pain and it tricks the body into thinking there's an acute injury. So bone healing is promoted, blood flow is promoted, and so on. In some cases, it's an alternative to surgery and certainly an alternative to pharmaceutical regimens that might last a year and have harmful side effects. Larry, you're providing real-time diagnostics and you have this shockwave technology that is unlike any technology in the industry. That's exactly right. Um, the Shockwave therapy technology was actually spun out of a human health company about a decade ago. It's now used in human health in a variety of different applications, but we're unique in animal health. Right. How big is the market for your technology? Well, when you take all the products together, the total available market in the United States alone for annual recurring revenue is two and a half billion dollars. Uh, talk to us about your business model. How do you make money? So we really focus on the blade portion of the razor and blade model, right? So we provide for our diagnostic devices, we provide the instrument to the clinic at no charge. I should say that our strategy is to bring innovative and diagnostic and therapeutic products to veterinarians that, of course, improve the quality of care for the animal, for the pet, and the satisfaction of the pet parent. But also importantly, we're looking to improve the cash flow, workflow, and profitability of the practice. And so, as is the practice in the industry, we provide our diagnostic instruments at no charge. And then we sell the cartridges that comprise the tests for the diagnostics, or we'll charge on a per slide basis for the slides that we process. Aside from that, our therapeutic products, those are sold as capital sales. Uh, we sell our uh, shockwave therapy generator, and then it comes with a handpiece, and the handpiece lasts for 50 treatments, and then it needs to be recharged for another 50 treatments. The CC Loop product, which you won't find in use necessarily in the clinic, but is sent home with the patient uh, for aftercare, it includes the parent in that continuum of care. It sends the healing home. That product is sold by the veterinarians to the pet parent, uh, and then the pet parent uses it, and once that battery is exhausted, then they replace it with another one from the veterinarian, or they can purchase it online. Okay. The revenue up 12.8% uh, Q3 2022 over the same uh, quarter in the previous year, uh, and up 23,000% over the same quarter in 2021. What have you done to drive this growth? Well, when I started in uh, October of 2021, the company had just the first diagnostic product, Trueforma, on the market. And we had a limited menu of tests or assays available at the time. And so our revenue was not very high. Uh, so when you compare year over year, you're looking at uh, a quarter where we only had uh, the diagnostic product with nominal revenue. Uh, then on October 1st of 2021, we acquired PulseFed. And in that fourth quarter, we generated around $4 million in, in revenue. Uh, and so when we compare now going forward, we're going to be going up against ourselves, if you will. But the sequential growth uh, really is, uh, for the third quarter uh, over the second, is really about the growth of the shockwave therapy. Shockwave had become uh, ubiquitous in equine or horse uh, healthcare, uh, almost a standard of care for performance horses, certainly. But it hadn't yet been introduced into the small animal market. Uh, the hand pieces that were used for horses were great for horses, but for small animals it required sedating the animal to do the treatment. That's not really something pet parents want to see. Uh, and so, on the other hand, a new hand piece had just been developed that would allow for this to be used for small animals without the need for 
sedation. And we anticipated that we'd be able to introduce that into the small animal market with success, and we were. Sales were up 51% year over year. Uh, animal, uh, small animal sales up 500%. So it's really a, a major catalyst for growth with that product. And then in the third quarter, we had a partial quarter of that CC Loop product, which we closed the acquisition for in July of that of last year. Excellent. So you've got 158 million in cash as of your most recent quarter. How do you deploy that going forward? How do you continue to grow your company? Well, the first thing we do with uh, with 100 and more than 150 million dollars in cash is we are happy that we're in this situation in the face of an economic downturn. Um, we're not at all concerned about uh, interest rates being high because we don't have any need to borrow any money and we have no debt on the balance sheet other than some uh, lease obligations. Having said that though, um, more importantly, it provides us with the opportunity to fund increases in our existing products uh, through marketing activities, uh, through further development of these products. And also, it allows us to continue to acquire innovative technology that will improve the quality of care for the pet and the satisfaction of the pet parent and improve the workflow, cash flow, and profitability of the practice. And we anticipate additional uh, acquisitions in the, in the course of the coming year. Larry, that leads me to my final question. What's the essential value proposition for investors today? So we are a dynamic company uh, that competes in a very large and growing animal health market. We've built over the last year, we've built a very strong and experienced management team. We've acquired the products that accomplish the things that we set out to accomplish for vets and for animals. And that team is, it really comes down to execution and that team is executing. Our gross margins are 75% as of the third quarter of last year. We expect them to be uh, over 70%, well over 70% for the full year. Uh, our sales have continued to grow. Uh, we exceeded $6 million in the fourth quarter of last year, of course our best quarter yet. And we all we share a common vision, uh, which is to improve the care of animals and also to improve the business situation of veterinarians. Larry, it's a great story. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Dave. Now to get more information on Zometica, visit zometicainfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free. You can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-RED-CHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redchip.com featuring emerging growth companies like Zometica. Again, visit redchip.com and subscribe today. In addition to our newsletter, you can also order your copy of Small Stocks Big Money. This is a book written by Redchip CEO featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Order your copy at Amazon.com today for just $18. Now let's move on to our next interview today with Eridus Pharmaceuticals. Vu, welcome back to the show. Good to be with you, Greg. Eridus recently released positive top-line results from its Phase 2A study in cystic fibrosis. Tell us about the results. Indeed. We just report this week a very successful study in cystic fibrosis. We met the study's primary endpoint as well as the secondary endpoint for this particular study. Uh, so what are they? The, well, the primary endpoint is safety. As you know, for inhaled anti antimicrobial such as AR501, the biggest hurdle is really safety because here we are developing a novel innovative compound, but also we are seeking to deliver the drug by direct inhalation to lung. So lung is a, a sensitive organ, and so it's, it is actually a challenging demonstration. We've shown in the data that we released this week that we indeed met the primer endpoint. The drug was deemed to be well tolerated with multiple dosing of inhaled dosing of this drug. So that is a, a big win for us. The second objective, that is the secondary endpoint, is a pharmacokinetic. What is that? Well, that is an outcome measure that shows whether the drug has been delivered efficiently and effectively into the target organ, in this case, the lung. 
And we surely have shown that the uptake of drug into the lung of these patients was very high and, and very efficient, uh, high enough that could achieve direct killing of the bacteria that are infecting these patients by about 50-fold higher than, than the drug that you need. It is also higher than about 10-fold or more drug that was taken up in the lung compared to the intravenous route, which already show significant uh, improvement in lung function and bacteriologic reduction, despite the IV route uh, not penetrating enough into lung of this drug. So we, we won on both accounts, so we're quite excited about the data. Yes, it seems from a common sense perspective that inhalation rather than intravenous delivery would be a more direct pathway to the lungs. And I think I'm not the only person who believes that. The Cystic Fibrosis Foundation loves your company, has been a big backer of your program. Tell us about their involvement with Aridus and especially how much have they invested to date? Indeed, you know, we're quite blessed to have the continued support of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. They have supported the company through the years in, in several ways. One is non-dilutive grant funding that got this program launched and getting through phase one and now phase 2A. They also follow that up with direct investment into the company. Uh, they actually are now the largest shareholder of the company and continue to support this study. Vu, recently you also reported positive data from a phase three study of AR301. Tell us about that data. Indeed, you know, another quite exciting development for the company, Greg. We have ordered that in the primary endpoint for the study. So AR301 is an antibacterial monoclonal antibody. It is being developed as a adjunctive treatment on top of standard of care antibiotic. In patients that are infected with a Staphylococcus aureus, which is a very common gram-positive bacteria causing pneumonia in, in patients, especially the, the older adults. And what we've shown in the primary endpoint, which is clinical cure of pneumonia, what we've shown is a, a very strong trend toward clinically meaningful improvement in the clinical cure in pneumonia. In the more vulnerable patient population, that is older adults, uh, 65 and older, the improvement in clinical cure when treated with AR301 was substantially higher, upwards of 33%, and that actually reached statistical significance for the study. And so we're quite excited of that fi finding. What we found there is that in older adults, what happened is when your doctor gives you um, antibiotic well, it's not just the antibiotic that's working alone but by, by themselves to cure you of the infection. It's actually your immune system working alongside with the, with the antibiotic. And as you get older, your immune system wanes and it actually reduces its efficiency. And therefore, the antibiotic is kind of working by itself alone when you get older. And so what we found is that in those patients, the older patients, when we add the antibody, AR301, in those patients with antibiotic, what happened is the cure rate dramatically increased as if, as if they had a fully uh, affected immune system. And so that is quite an exciting found, finding. It reminds us that there is these vulnerable patient population that medicines don't work as well on them. And so what AR301 does, it has actually improved uh, that situation dramatically. So we'll be discussing with the FDA and EMA on this data, and we expect to have outcome from those meetings very soon. And then we'll report to the street once that is available. Yes, Vu, we look forward to getting news there. You're getting traction in cystic fibrosis. You're getting traction in pneumonia. These, these are two gigantic diseases. Huge markets must be there. How big are they for these indications? We certainly think that uh, they, uh, they are potentially blockbuster, Craig. So in uh, the pneumonia drug, for example, uh, our recent phase three data show that when treated with AR301, these patients that have pneumonia and they're in the hospital, they're in the ICU, the intensive care unit, we could actually cut the length of stay in the ICU by about seven days. 
That means that we can take these patients out of the ICU about seven days faster when they're on our drug and nine days in the hospital, meaning that we can actually uh, get them home nine days earlier. Uh, and so we believe that that will translate to substantial pharmacoeconomic savings to the payers. And so uh, we expect to be able to monetize that very easily and charge only a fraction of that savings. And that would still be a billion dollar, about 1.1 to 1.2 billion dollar for each one of our two phase three candidate in pneumonia. We have a very strong confidence that uh, these will be quite valuable drug. The CF drug also is quite valuable. That market by itself is somewhere around seven uh, to eight hundred million dollars for inhaled antimicrobials. Vu, to wrap up, let's uh, put it all in an essential value proposition. Why should investors take an interest in Aridus Pharmaceuticals right now? We happen to be in a continued bear market, as you know, Craig. And a lot of companies like us are in you know, challenging positions. Uh, we continue to be innovative, resourceful, and maybe scrappy is the word that, that I might use here. But as you can see here, through all the challenges of the pandemic in the last uh, two and a half years, we're able to push through these clinical studies and deliver data. And surrounding us are very challenging capital markets. Uh, and yet we're able to, uh, to show that here's a company with phase three asset and a phase two asset in cystic fibrosis that we just reported data on, all wrapped up in the company that the street thinks that it's somewhere, you know, in the sub $50 million market cap range. So we think that this is tremendous opportunities for investors to take a look at a company with multiple late stage asset. And I would dare to say that very, this is very rare to have this many late stage asset in a biotechnology company that are at this valuation. We do believe that this represents a, a really unusual uh, investment opportunity for potential uh, investors. We certainly agree, Vu. Thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you, Greg. Good to be with you. Now to get more information on Aridus Pharmaceuticals, visit ArdisPharmaInfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free. You can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-REDSHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redchip.com featuring emerging growth companies like Aridus Pharmaceuticals. Again, visit redchip.com and subscribe today. In addition to our newsletter, you can also order your copy of Small Stocks Big Money. This is a book written by Redship CEO featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Order your copy at Amazon.com today for just $18. Now let's recap the companies you met today. First you met Zometica, stock symbol Z-O-M on the New York Stock Exchange American. Zometica's rapidly increasing revenues and attractive gross margins provide a clear pathway to profitability for the company. And with a history of successful acquisitions, they provide a clear blueprint for future product expansions. With a solid track record of success and strong near-term growth potential, combined with modest cash burn and a strong balance sheet, Zometica is ideally positioned for success. Again, to learn more, visit ZometicaInfo.com. Then you met Aridus Pharmaceuticals, stock symbol ARDS on the NASDAQ. Aridus's proprietary technology platform can rapidly identify human-derived monoclonal antibodies for various infectious diseases. These antibodies can then be applied as therapeutic agents that optimally neutralize invading pathogens. The company has received funding from the Gates Foundation and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which is one of the company's largest shareholders. Five analysts currently cover Aridus with buy ratings and a medium price target of $12 a share. Learn more at ArdusPharmaInfo.com. Again, if you have any questions about any of the public companies featured on today's show, please call us at 1-800-RED-CHIP 
or email us at info at redchip.com. In closing, remember, while small caps can provide significant gains, you must be prepared for the downside. Small cap stocks are among the most volatile asset class. Some of the companies featured on this show are red chip client companies, and we may own stock in these companies. So please always read our disclosures at redchip.com. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you next week with some new, exciting emerging growth companies.